Throughout its existence, Thomas the Tank Engine has made appearances in various forms of media outside of the popular book series and TV show that catapulted the number one engine to international success. It's a cool feeling when something you consider niche breaks into the mainstream, and Thomas has done that a few times. He's appeared as a balloon in the famous Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade several times, and was featured on screen in Marvel's Ant-Man back in 2015. But Thomas's strangest crossover ever might be an appearance in a NASCAR race back in 2016. Here's how it happened. The Bad Boy Off-Road 300 was a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race from New Hampshire Motor Speedway on Sunday, September 25, 2016. One of the teams in the field of 40 race cars was Tommy Baldwin Racing, a backmarker organization that didn't have the funds of some of the bigger teams in the sport. Therefore, their objective was not to go out and necessarily win the race, although that would certainly be nice and very unexpected, but to finish with a clean car on a shoestring budget. Tommy Baldwin Jr., the owner of the team, was a NASCAR crew chief and had started his own Cup Series team back in 2009. In the years since, they had run a variety of cars with many different drivers. The closest they came to victory was during the 2012 Daytona 500, when the race was stopped for several hours after another car crashed into a safety vehicle and set the track on fire. Baldwin's number 36 car, driven by Dave Blaney, was leading at the time of the incident, and if the race hadn't been able to restart, the entire Tommy Baldwin racing team was headed towards victory lane in the biggest NASCAR race of the season. However, the track was cleaned up and the race resumed, and Blaney eventually finished 15th. In 2016, after a few seasons with rookie drivers Michael Annette and Alex Bowman, Baldwin tapped veteran Regan Smith to drive the number 7 car full time. Again, the team's goal was to finish every race cleanly and keep costs low, and getting an experienced driver behind the wheel who could keep the car undamaged was part of that plan. Their best finish of the season came at Pocono Raceway earlier that year, when rain and fog ended the race early and the team finished third. Driver Regan Smith has his own interesting NASCAR journey, one that consists of the Cato New York native climbing in the seat of almost any NASCAR ride available with four wheels on it just to stay in the sport. He raced for numerous years in NASCAR's second series with limited success, but finally got the opportunity at the cup level in 2007 when he split a ride with NASCAR legend Mark Martin. The following year, he raced full-time in the 01 car for a team called Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, which used to be run by, you guessed it, Dale Earnhardt. But the once successful organization was a shell of its former self, and the team was barely hanging on due to mismanagement and a lack of sponsors and resources. Smith did the best he could that year with the equipment he was given, but good finishes were hard to come by. Amazingly, he was in position to win the 2008 Amp Energy 500 at Talladega Super Speedway, and coming to the finish line, he made a bold move below race leader Tony Stewart and was the first driver to take the checkered flag. However, in one of NASCAR's most controversial calls, officials quickly penalized the 01 team for passing below the yellow line which is illegal on a big drafting track like Talladega, and booted him from first back to the 18th position. Smith and fans alike tried to argue he was forced below the line and was only trying to avoid a collision with Stewart, but NASCAR didn't see it that way, and what should have been his first win ended up as a mid-pack finish. Many believe Regan Smith was robbed of his first Cup Series victory that day along with the massive winner's paycheck that would have greatly benefited the ailing DEI organization. Fortunately for Smith, he finally found victory lane a few years later in 2011, driving for the underdog Furniture Row Racing Team and won one of NASCAR's biggest races of the year, the Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway. 
Sometimes good guys do finish first. Fast forward a few seasons and Regan Smith was back at the cup level. One of the main sponsors of the number 7 car that year was Nyko Toys, a company that sells high quality remote controlled vehicles aimed at kids. The team had run a default paint scheme for most of the season, but sometimes there would be a special branded car that would highlight one of Nyko's products. This is where Thomas the Tank Engine comes in. Nyko had recently announced a remote controlled Thomas, and presumably there was a decision to advertise this product on the car at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. This was likely a business to business deal, where Nyko got Fisher Price's approval to run the Thomas livery in exchange for a discount on the licensing fee they would have to pay to make the RC Thomas. Overall, everybody wins. Nyko got to show up to the track with a cool car, and Fisher Price got some free Thomas advertising. Now about the car itself. Personally, I think the designer knocked this paint scheme out of the park. Obviously, I'm a little biased as a Thomas fan, but it really looks like this is a Thomas version of a NASCAR race car. Even the smaller details like changing the color of the number to yellow and having red as a secondary color along the front and sides are excellent additions. There were a few other concepts that were considered, including one with a checkerboard pattern and others that had Percy and James on the hood or even the Thomas and Friends logo, but I believe the version they ended up going with looks the best. I mean, I can't say no to a giant Thomas face. And before you ask, another team was running the number one car that weekend, and you can't have duplicate cars with the same number, so rolling up with a Thomas themed race car with a number one on the side would have been cool, but it couldn't have happened. Alright, so about the race itself. Like I mentioned, Tommy Baldwin Racing wasn't the most competitive team. They qualified 30th out of 40 cars, which is right about where you would expect them to be. When the race started, Smith fell back a few positions, as indicated by the tracker at the top of the screen, and quickly got lapped and spent most of the race battling with cars that were not on the lead lap. And when you're not running up front, you don't get a lot of TV time. Having watched this race back in preparation for this video, there are unfortunately very few moments where you can see the Thomas the Tank Engine car in action. It's usually only when the leaders are passing by that we get a glimpse of the race car. And then there's this moment when Regan Smith is getting lapped again and I thought we get our best look at the car so far, but NBC decided to go split screen and then the car peels off to the pit lane for adjustments. There are a few better looks later in the race, but selfishly this car didn't appear on TV as much as I would have liked. I remember watching this race live and obviously knew that the Thomas the Tank Engine car was running, but it didn't seem like a big deal at the time because you never really saw the car. It was like playing a game of I Spy and waiting for the blue car with a face on it to enter the picture. At the end of the day, Regan Smith came home three laps down in 34th position. Not a great performance for the small team, but he did not get involved in any accidents and he kept the car nice and clean. In terms of who actually competed for the win that day, Martin Truex Jr. led the most laps, but it was Kevin Harvick who got the lead with 5 laps to go and won the race. Tommy Baldwin Racing's Twitter account posted a few messages about the race weekend, including some of the pictures you've seen in this video, and apparently the team took the car to a local school in New Hampshire before it raced that weekend, so some lucky kids got to see the Thomas the Tank Engine car up close and personal. So what happened after all this? Well, the Thomas the Tank Engine car was only intended as a one race deal, so it's not considered a failure or anything that Thomas didn't appear anymore after this. As for driver Regan Smith, he finished out the year in the number 7 car before continuing as a substitute driver in 2017 and 2018 for several teams. In 2018, he joined Fox Sports NASCAR coverage as a pit reporter, where he has remained ever since. Tommy Baldwin Racing cut back on full-time competition after the 2016 season, presumably due to sponsorship issues. The team briefly returned during the 2020 season with 5 different drivers over 22 races, but that's the last time we saw this team in action. Tommy Baldwin Jr. currently serves as the competition director for Rick Ware Racing, another backmarker team in the Cup Series. 
the actual Thomas the Tank Engine car was likely brought back to the race shop, had the Thomas wrap and stickers removed, and was repurposed into another car. Nyko Toys is still around, but they haven't been active on social media in a very long time, and only occasionally upload videos to their YouTube channel. They're still in business, but it appears they're mostly focused on global marketing, particularly in China. I never picked up the actual RC Thomas that was made as part of this promotion, but I'll be on the lookout from now on. Since this was a one race deal, there was never any merchandise made of the Thomas the Tank Engine car, which is a shame, but I did have a custom diecast creator make me a 1 to 24 scale of the car as a cool memento, since these are two of my favorite hobbies. NASCAR has a long history of cool crossover marketing events. And while this one was pretty subtle and not noticed by the majority of race fans, the Thomas the Tank Engine race car at New Hampshire Motor Speedway will go down as one of my personal favorites. I doubt we'll ever see something like this again since Thomas and Friends isn't marketed as well as it used to be, but it was really cool that it happened. Hope you enjoyed this deep dive and thanks for watching.